Greetings, fellow being. My name is Gavin Smith. Gavin Michael Smith, or at least according on my birth certificate. Here on the internet, I go by Zen. Zen the Alchemist. You can call me either, or neither. Whatever you prefer, really. If it resonates, I'll respond. If it doesn't, I won't. It's not that big of a deal, I'm not attached. We're here today for the audio-visual component to the ebook that I crafted earlier this year called What the Butt is Bitcoin? A Beginner's Guide to the Earth's First Cryptocurrency. See, as I've had more time for myself this year to learn what it is that I wish to learn, I found myself diving deeply, passionately into the topic that is cryptocurrency. Learning how to become my own bank and to learning how to allow my money to work for me rather than me working for my money. Where did it all begin? Well, Bitcoin, of course. And that's why I decided to write this book in hopes of potentially inspiring, encouraging, or maybe providing just a subtle glimpse of information for someone who's new to the topic, but curious. So without further ado, allow us to begin diving right in to today's book. What the butt is Bitcoin? A Beginner's Guide to the Earth's First Cryptocurrency by Zen the Alchemist. Independently published on April 20th, 2021. Dedicated to you, the reader. Introduction. Qualifications. I was first introduced to Bitcoin in high school, around 2013. Browsing r slash trees on Reddit, bored in Latin class, I came across a post talking about how people were buying their plant medicines via the internet using a relatively new form of currency called Bitcoin. I was too sheepish at the time to become involved in this process. I didn't want to risk my livelihood just to order some greens to my mom's house. So instead, I simply admired those brave enough to, from afar and put the concept on the back burner. Fast forward to the year 2017. By this point, I'd graduated from high school and was living on my own in California. I was buying ganja from the dispensary, so there's no need for me to order any online. However, some friends of mine were becoming interested in cryptocurrency and the potential to accrue funds simply by investing their US dollar into various forms of digital money. Bitcoin finally started making global news and was beginning to shed the stigmas posed by the mainstream, proving itself to be a potentially viable standard of currency. Encouraged by a close couple of friends, I decided to download the app Coinbase. I purchased my first portion of Bitcoin on September 21st, 2017. The price of Bitcoin was 3,718.49 US dollars per coin. I bought 0 0.012908 BTC for 49.99 US dollars. No more than a month later, I was offered the opportunity to leave Southern California for a sporadic road trip north in search of trim work. At this time, I was still rewiring my perception regarding finances, learning how to override the scarcity mentality bestowed upon me in my youth with an abundant state of being. I didn't have much savings, and inspired by the beat Nick Riders in the 1950s, I sold all of my prized possessions, my record player and my vinyl collection, my thrifted threads, and my BTC, in order to have funds for the road. And on October 6, 2017, I sold my 0 0.0129 BTC. At this point, Bitcoin, one Bitcoin equaled $4,323.26. I earned $52.78 USD, profiting just about $3 for a brief investment after transaction fees. Funny enough, I still made more profit putting my currency in Bitcoin for less than a month than I would have if I held it in my savings account. Had I viewed the purchase as a long-term investment, I could have made an even greater profit when the price of Bitcoin reached $20,000 later that year in December. Currently, as I write this ebook, the price of Bitcoin sits at about $57,000 USD. And if I had been wise and held on to that 2017 investment, that 0 0.0129 Bitcoin that I bought at $49.99, Today it would be worth $767.63 on April 4th, 2021. With the world seemingly shifting gears overnight in the spring of 2020, my passion for learning about investing and the passive income was revitalized. 
Utilizing the stimulus offered by the US government, I've bought back into Bitcoin and I've hit the ground running learning as much as I can about Bitcoin, digital currencies, and the future of the internet in general. This time harder, better, faster, stronger. Since my original introduction to Bitcoin in 2013, I've done immense internal work unlearning society's deep conditioning and reprogramming my perspective and approach to life to align with the values that I hold at the core of my being. This is why I am writing this book, to share what I've learned and continue to learn so far along my journey of awakening or liberation and financial stability. No, everything in this book ought to be taken as a grain of sand. If anything, I consider myself a professional dropout. Thus, this is not financial advice. The goal of this book is to educate the common individual on a brief history of Bitcoin and why I personally believe it to be the future of cryptocurrency. If anything said in this piece seems to be false or misleading, please reach out to me and offer a correction so that I may publish this writing with the utmost accuracy. Without further delay, I am beyond grateful to be able to share this information with you today in the form of my first ebook, What the Butt is Bitcoin? by Zen the Alchemist. Note, I, the author, Gavin Smith, Zen the Alchemist, am in no way affiliated with any of these crypto projects, exchanges, and or sources cited in the crafting of this document. Everything compiled here has been done so out of pure passion and belief in the future of cryptocurrency and decentralized finance. I am in no way being incentivized by any of the people or the projects noted in this ebook. This is writing is simply a creation motivated by my personal belief in the importance of translating, synthesizing, and delivering this information as accurately and as transparently as possible to my fellow individuals. Preface, a fan fiction regarding Bitcoin's inception. Translating, translating, translating. As an interdimensional traveler, it's a challenge to keep track of all the minute local details of a certain space, like the time and the day of a specific planet. Though some days you just don't forget. On the eve of October 31st, 2008 AD, on Gaia, Earth, Taya, Mat, is a date I will forever remember. This is the date I attempted to override the global financial system with a single program I called Bitcoin. This software created a decentralized, semi-anonymous system for peer-to-peer -peer value of exchange. By establishing a digital currency, the people of the planet can now create their own money that was not controlled by a select group of elites and could begin freeing themselves from the mental, physical, spiritual, and fiscal enslavement perpetuated by an archaic alien race who hijacked the planet eons ago. This program also planted the seeds for the people and the planet's ability to eventually participate in the universal marketplace. An interdimensional exchange that connects people across all planes, pods, pixels, or however you wish to define a realm. Of course, as with all novel inventions, there is a learning curve to ensure the upgrade is accepted. This is why I chose to remain in orbit for some time in order to nurture the digital seedling until everything took root and a quality community formed under her, sworn to uphold her core values and intentions for creation. I was being called for a more pressing universal matter, so I left Bitcoin in the hands of the coders. The people of Earth, Gaia, Terra, Mat, will join the collective when they are ready to realize that they are not the only life in existence. And so I travel onward as an alien android knows how to do, firmly aware all good things occur in perfect timing. Yours truly, SN. Chapter 1. What in the world is a white paper? Just as the introduction of this ebook attempts to communicate the intentions and the purposes of this piece of literature, a white paper is a condensed manuscript that depicts the reasonings, ideas, and philosophies, and so on, presented in a project. According to Wikipedia, the term white paper originated in the British government. Many consider the Churchill White Paper, published in 1922, to be the first notable document of this kind, setting the precedent for presenting complex information in a digestible fashion. Almost 100 years later, in 2008, an anonymous individual, or group of anonymous individuals, going by the moniker Satoshi Nakamoto, 
published a white paper for the novel internet technology called Bitcoin. In the first sentence of the Bitcoin white paper, titled Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, Nakamoto describes the invention as a purely peer-to-peer -peer version of electronic cash that would allow online payments to be sent directly from one party to another without going through a financial institution, Nakamoto, 2008. In the rest of this ebook, I will be discussing the brief history of Bitcoin, the importance of this revolutionary invention, how it operates, and why I believe it to be the first domino to fall in a long overdue chain of events to move money out of centralized banking systems and back into the power and the palms of the common individual. Chapter 2. A Brief History of Bitcoin On the eve of October 31st, 2008, an anonymous source operating under the screen name Satoshi Nakamoto published the official Bitcoin white paper via an MIT public license, sending a subliminal digital shockwave through the traditional global financial institution. According to news.bitcoin.com, this document was first published on cryptography mailing list, a forum or message chain hosted by a group of coders on metsdow.com utilizing the GNU Mailman 2 Piper Mail application. Arguably, this could not have been better timed considering just a month earlier on September 29th, 2008, the US stock market crashed and the Dow Jones Industrial dropped 777.7 .7 points during intraday trading. Although the white paper was published near the end of 2008, the Bitcoin Genesis block was not created until January 3rd, 2009. A few days later, on January 9th, 2009, Satoshi Nakamoto shared the program with the community of metstab.com. Satoshi Nakamoto published the original Bitcoin protocol as an open source C++ program on Bitcoin.org, providing the opportunity for individuals interested in the project to participate in the newly developed, decentralized, peer-to-peer -peer transactional program. Cryptographer and self-proclaimed cyberpunk Hal Finney took a particular interest in the project and began running the original source code program presented on Bitcoin.org, making him one of the original Bitcoin BTC miners, and one of the greatest contributors to the Bitcoin code known to this day. Shortly after downloading the software, Finney began communicating with Satoshi Nakamoto, reporting various bugs in the invention and implementing edits in the code in order to improve the program's overall operability. Then, on January 11, 2009, Satoshi Nakamoto successfully transferred 10 BTC Bitcoin to Finney via the Bitcoin blockchain, becoming the first recorded peer-to-peer -peer transaction on the network. According to Andy Greenberg in his 2014 Forbes article, Nakamoto's neighbor, my hunt for Bitcoin's creator, led to a paralyzed crypto genius, Finney mentioned he planned on repaying the 10 Bitcoin to Satoshi Nakamoto. However, this plan soon fell from Hal's list of priorities, for he suddenly, inexplicably, began to fatigue quickly, slur his words, experience strange tingling, and lose coordination in his right hand. Greenberg, 2014. Later that year, in August 2009, Finney's doctor officially diagnosed him with ALS. Regardless, that did not obstruct his passion for the Bitcoin project. Even as the functions of Finney's human vessel began to deteriorate, he remained resilient and persisted on writing code for Bitcoin. And as Greenberg states, at one point, he wrote an improvement to the protocol's elliptic curve cryptography that would speed up transactions as much as 20%. Even after he lost his ability to type with both hands and then to type at all, he continued to use eye tracking software to write code, including a program called BC Flick aimed at better securing Bitcoin wallets. Greenberg, 2014. At the end of the day, Finney's core focus was improving the internet encryption and personal privacy overall. This is apparent in his essential coding contribution to the Pretty Good Privacy, aka PGP. The internet's first openly accessible encryption program strong enough to resist privacy preying governmental intelligence agencies. Moving on to a brief timeline of Bitcoin. The following timeline was originally presented by the YouTube channel That it Is Yummy and their video a brief History of Bitcoin in 5 Minutes, published January 12, 2020. On May 22, 2010, a programmer named Leslo exchanged 10,000 Bitcoin, roughly 41 US dollars at the time, to Jeremy Sturdivant, aka Jericho's, 
for purchasing him two large Papa John's pizzas. This is recorded as the first time Bitcoin was utilized in a commercial transaction. Now, May 22nd is recognized and celebrated as a holiday within the Bitcoin community and is known as Bitcoin Pizza Day. Today, these are known as the most expensive pizzas ever purchased. Bitcoin stayed under the radar for the rest of 2010, and in February of 2011, the value of Bitcoin finally paralleled the price of the US dollar. One Bitcoin equaled one US dollar. On April 23rd, 2011, the original anonymous developer of the Bitcoin project, Satoshi Nakamoto, sent an email to his fellow developer, Mike Hearn, stating, I've moved on to other things. Bitcoin's in good hands with Gavin and everyone. Subsequently, he mysteriously disappeared from the internet and has not been heard from since. In the same month, April 2011, Namecoin emerged. Namecoin is the first alternative to Bitcoin, aka altcoin, to enter the public sphere. And this set the stage for the future development of alternative blockchain-based technologies. In October 2011, according to Jake Frankenfield's altcoin article on investopedia.com, Litecoin emerged. Litecoin utilizes a similar technology to Bitcoin, however it operates on a unique blockchain and is branded the silver to Bitcoin's gold. Frankenfield, 2021. By January 2012, various companies began applying federally to accept Bitcoin as payment. In November 2012, Bitcoin experienced its first halving, which reduced mining rewards from 50 Bitcoin to 25 Bitcoin for every block mined. Halving is the process written in the Bitcoin code, where every four years the reward for mining Bitcoin blocks is reduced by 50%. I will further elaborate on mining, blocks, and all the other crypto jargon and Bitcoin's processes later in the book. For the next few years, Bitcoin continued to circulate within its community, while simultaneously most of the mainstream media broadcasted a fear-based narrative regarding Bitcoin and the future of cryptocurrency. People who desired to dip their fingers into the Bitcoin bag began purchasing BTC for USD on independent or centralized exchanges, such as Mt. Gox. This centralized Bitcoin exchange, hosted in Shibuya, Japan, by the end of 2013, reportedly handled up to 70% of all Bitcoin exchanges or transactions. In February 2014, Mt. Gox suddenly suspended trading, closed its website, and filed for bankruptcy, according to Wikipedia. All 850,000 Bitcoins stored on the by the company were claimed to go missing, likely stolen. The sketchy nature of this centralized exchange may have deterred some individuals from investing. However, this did not sway the diehard Bitcoin believers. By the end of December 2014, Microsoft began accepting Bitcoin payments for products on their website. All the while, the mainstream media, such as the BBC, continued to push stories that Bitcoin was only used by no good, dirty, rotten, pig-stealing people. This was backed by the fact that a majority of Bitcoin transactions occurred on the Silk Road, an online black market, selling everything from drugs to stolen credit cards to murderers for hire. BBC, 2020. The site itself was investigated and eventually shut down by the U.S. government in 2013, and in 2015, its creator, Russ Ulbricht, was convicted and sentenced to multiple life sentences, thus proving Bitcoin cannot be used for criminal purposes without consequences. In 2016, the Bitcoin blockchain experienced its second halving, reducing mining rewards from 25 Bitcoin to 12.5 Bitcoin per block. Just over a year later, by September 2017, Japan's Financial Services Agency legally recognized 11 companies as registered cryptocurrency exchange operators. Meanwhile, the value of Bitcoin began to gradually increase, and by December 2017, its price went parabolic, rising from 7,600 US dollars around November 17, 2017, to just about $20,000 around December 17, 2017. In less than a week, the market self-corrected, the parabola peaked, and by December 22nd, 2017, Bitcoin was valued at 13,800 US dollars. The major news outlets claimed this to be the death of Bitcoin. Concurrently, the price began to steadily reduce for the years to come, and did not begin to see a resurgence until March 2020, as a reaction to the government-inspired USD hyperinflation initiated by the corona plague. Note. In September 2018, the Bitcoin community underwent a fair amount of internal conflict, known as the Bitcoin hash war. 
This led to the forking of the Bitcoin blockchain and resolved in the creation of various side projects known as Bitcoin SV and Bitcoin Cash. Neither project has gained much traction, and if anything, this inspired the crypto community to explore the opportunities to develop novel altcoins. Discouraged by the diminishing value of the US dollar, more and more common individuals, like myself, began to invest in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies as a response to the preposterous mass printing of America's currency. Thus, beginning the current bull run of 2020, steadily carrying on in 2021. In the first quarter of 2021, the mainstream news narrative regarding Bitcoin and other altcoins began to flip, as well-established entities like PayPal, Visa, Goldman Sachs, and the Sacramento Kings began adopting and offering the option to utilize Bitcoin and its fellow altcoins. Chapter 3. What the butt is Bitcoin? First and foremost, it should be noted that the terms Bitcoin, lowercase b, and Bitcoin, capital B, parentheses, capital B, T, C, close parentheses, are two different demarcations. Although they are spelled and pronounced identically, the context of the conversation delineates the difference in definition. Lowercase Bitcoin is used to refer to the open source software, the product, the technology created to run and operate on a blockchain, aka a distributed ledger technology. As stated by Nicholas Proulton in episode 18 of the Blossoming Technologist podcast, titled Demystifying Blockchain and Cryptocurrencies with Nicholas Proulton, quote, a blockchain is an algorithmic handshake that uses a consensus algorithm to certify that the transfer of value has been conducted. Blossoming Technologist Podcast, 2021. The Bitcoin software is essentially a series of digital knots, tied together by mathematical equations forming one giant bundle of knots. When one runs the Bitcoin Core program, their computer begins solving these randomized mathematical equations, aka untying the knots. This process is known as mining. For each equation successfully solved, the computer stores this information on the software in what is known as a block. Once a block is established, the computer that solved that said equation is rewarded with capital B Bitcoin, BTC, the digital currency for its work. These blocks build on each other sequentially, creating a series of blocks known as a blockchain. Note, the Bitcoin blockchain has a limited amount of blocks able to be mined. There are only 21 million BTC blocks available within the Bitcoin software. For every 210,000 blocks mined, which takes roughly four years, the BTC reward is cut in half. This is called the halving. This assists in prolonging the mining process and also provides an inherent value to the coin, considering there's a limited supply of Bitcoin, 21 million. Greg Walker, on his website, learnmeabitcoin.com, shares a succinct explanation of how Bitcoin operates, saying, quote, when you run the program, Bitcoin Core, it will connect to other computers who are also running the program, and they will start sharing a file with you. This file is called the blockchain, and it basically is a big list of transactions. Walker, 2010. This long list of transactions includes every movement slash exchange that has ever occurred on the blockchain, including the first peer-to-peer -peer transaction where Satoshi Nakamoto sent Hal Finney 10 BTC January 12, 2009. As stated in the original Bitcoin white paper, quote, the network timestamps transactions by hashing them into ongoing chain of hash-based proof of work, forming a record that cannot be changed without redoing the proof of work. The longest chain not only serves as proof of the sequence of events witnessed, but proof that it came from the largest pool of CPU power. End quote. Bitcoin White Paper, 2008. Simply put, Bitcoin 
The software is a computer program maintained by a community of individual consenting and agreeing to participate and run the code. Anyone with enough computer storage and processing power is able to download the software, the blockchain technology, aka Bitcoin Core, via bitcoin.org. If anyone makes a change to the blockchain, i.e. creates a transaction, every computer running Bitcoin Core will confirm the said transaction and will log this occurrence on the blockchain. This record of blockchain history is known as the proof of work. This makes the Bitcoin blockchain a rather secured system for someone attempting to attack the program would need to somehow coordinate a movement that would manipulate more than half of the computers operating the Bitcoin software simultaneously across the entire world. In theory, Bitcoin is intended to be utilized as a form of currency that allows individuals to exchange digital cash without the use of a third party middleman like a bank or an investment broker or a credit lender needing to authorize the transaction. In practice, we are seeing Bitcoin not as a viable candidate for currency, for unfortunately the network takes far too long in order to transact. Instead, these days, Bitcoin is widely seen as a digital store of value and can be compared to a digital gold. As mentioned above, once a computer has successfully solved one of the mathematical equations on the Bitcoin software, a block becomes available for storing information. The computer that solved the aforementioned equation is rewarded with a capital B BTC Bitcoin. For every 210,000 blocks established, the Bitcoin mining reward is cut in half. In the beginning, miners were rewarded 50 Bitcoin for every block mined. In 2012, this reward was reduced to 25 Bitcoin per block. In 2016, minor rewards dropped to 12.5 Bitcoin per block, and in 2020, the most recent halving, the Bitcoin reward came to 6.25 Bitcoin mined per block. This prolongs the life of the Bitcoin program, for if all 21 million Bitcoin blocks were mined at the same rewards, it'd be way too easy for a select group of individuals to earn a majority of the coins on the blockchain. Once the Bitcoin is available and stored on the blockchain, it is held in a secure digital space, known as a wallet, and the blocks keep record of this process. This wallet is protected by a randomized 256-bit key, which is only known by the one who established the wallet. Let it be known, if an individual loses their private key, there is no way to redeem or restore any of the value held within the wallet. If someone wishes to transfer their Bitcoin to another computer slash digital wallet without the use of a third party exchange, they must create a public key or an address that is capable of receiving this transaction. If someone wishes to transfer their Bitcoin to another computer or another digital wallet without using a centralized or third party exchange, they must create a public key and an address that is capable of receiving the transaction. Let it be known I won't be covering transactions or wallets or crypto transfers today in this ebook. So instead, I recommend you check out LearnMeABitcoin.com, where Walker has done great work walking us through the Bitcoin transaction process. Once a block is established on the blockchain, the owner of the block, the one who holds the key, can do whatever they want with it, just like cash. If they wish to trade their Bitcoin for US dollars or any other form of currency, they are more than welcome. This is how people who do not mine or have the capacity to run Bitcoin Core software are able to purchase and invest in Bitcoin. This is one of the reasons why third party centralized exchanges are so helpful. Although Bitcoin is a software created to do away with the need for middlemen in the transaction, centralized exchanges allow individuals who are still learning how to mine, manage wallets, and keys and all the technicalities of crypto trading to participate and exchange their currencies with a greater level of ease and efficiency. To no surprise, there are both potential benefits and detriments to using third party exchanges. One of the biggest benefits of these centralized crypto exchanges is they provide a space for common individuals such as myself the opportunity to participate in the crypto market. Thanks to the Coinbase app, I was able to dip my toes into the crypto waters initially in 2017. Conversely, when an individual invests in centralized crypto exchange, they do not technically own or possess the cryptocurrencies in which they are invested. 
just as an individual who decides to hold their funds in a bank forfeit their money to the bank for the time being. Quote, I have a love-hate relationship with these public exchanges, says Nicholas Proulton. To paraphrase, he continues on to say, quote, They're essentially like stock exchanges, where all the information of the investors is stored in a centralized space. So when you hear in the news, exchange hacked, it's not just the blockchain itself was compromised, it's the exchanges holding their clients' coins and the information is now in jeopardy. Unquote. Blossoming technologist. 2021. Another potential downfall to these public exchanges is the individual is taking a risk, trusting these centralized systems will operate in good faith. A prime example of this is the sudden disappearance of Mt. Gox and the 850,000 Bitcoin circulating in the exchange in February 2014. This occurrence showed that not all centralized exchanges can be trusted to the secure coins of the individual, and unlike banks, these exchanges do not have insurance providers and in the case of the robbery. Albeit, events like this will not squash the people's faith in the future of digital finance. To highlight the previously mentioned exchange, Coinbase, there is a greater level of assurance with this specific company. This is because on April 14th, 2021, Coinbase Global opened a direct listing IPO on the NASDAQ stock market exchange, becoming the first crypto company to become a public on the U.S. stock market. This milestone adds a layer of legitimacy to the company and cryptocurrency in general, potentially setting the groundwork for other crypto companies to become officially recognized by established institutions. Another potential risk and reward factor regarding the cryptocurrency is the market is highly volatile. This is shown in the rapid rise and fall of Bitcoin price in December of 2017. Anyone choosing to invest in crypto ought to be well educated on what they are investing in before contributing their funds to these projects. Nonetheless, world currencies such as USD are no less volatile than the cryptocurrencies, and this is evident in sudden crashes of the American economy, such as the Great Depression of 1929 and again the Great Recession of 2008. Just like any other product, the value is based on the supply and demand of the commodity. Thus, if there is a large supply of Bitcoin but low demand, the value will be minimal. Oppositely, if there is a limited supply of Bitcoin, and a high demand, the value will be maximal. Regarding the latter half of the previous statement, this is the intuitive direction we are seeing the movement of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in general. To quote, a rising tide lifts all boats. End quote. Every day we are seeing greater levels of adoption of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in the mainstream. Just within the first quarter of this year, 2021, well-established companies such as PayPal, MasterCard, and Visa have officially jumped on the crypto train and are creating infrastructure so they may stay on track and transact in the decentralized finance field. World governments are now being forced to recognize these novel forms of assets and currencies and are scrambling to understand and operate alongside these digital cash systems. No matter how much or how little regulation these archaic governmental entities attempt to impose upon the people, I, as an individual, firmly believe in the ability of the people coming together. The populace will continue to find ways to circumvent the conditionings of greed and fear and scarcity mentality force-fed to the people by the Fed. And at the end of the day, those writing the regulations will have to script the language of the legislation so that the language is written by the people for the people. As this great nation intended, since its insemination, eons before colonizer ships landed on the shores of the land commonly referred to today as the USA. Chapter 4. How do I acquire Bitcoin? There are multiple means of acquiring and storing Bitcoin, and most were already discussed in the chapter above. Nonetheless, I reiterate here to review. The first, potentially most complicated means of acquiring Bitcoin is via the process of mining. In order to mine Bitcoin, one must have access to a computer that is capable of downloading and storing the entire blockchain history, which is a computer file that is at least 350 gigabytes of memory. Along with that, miners must have the energy, capacity, and the bandwidth to run the Bitcoin Core software, the BitCore software, so their individual copies of Bitcoin blockchain may remain in sync with all the other computers, nodes, on the network. This prevents the act of double spending. 
This also assures that all blockchain interactions are verifiable and unable to be altered in the future. As previously mentioned, when a computer running the Bitcoin software solves one of the presented mathematical equations, the computer running the software, aka the miner, is rewarded with an amount of BTC. This BTC can then be stored on a digital wallet which is protected by a randomized 256-bit private key slash password. This is how the original Bitcoin community began. Individuals coming together to participate in the project, running the Bitcoin software on their computers, and solving these various equations in order to receive BTC. Be aware, if a private key or password to one's digital wallet is lost, it is gone for good. There is no way to look up or recover a lost or stolen key, thus it must be protected to the T. Most often it is recommended to back up this 256-bit passcode physically on a piece of paper and store it in an undisclosed location that can be recovered in the case of an emergency. Another way someone can accrue BTC is through the process of receiving the currency as a gift. In order to receive the gift digitally, one must have a digital wallet with a 256-bit public key, which is essentially an address for a gift giver to send the currency. One can also gift a physical device with stored Bitcoin as a means of gifting or storing BTC. These devices are called cold wallets or hardware wallets and are less susceptible to security breaches. Someone must have access to the physical device in order to obtain any coins stored on it offline. A third, and perhaps the most common way of purchasing Bitcoin, is through a centralized or third-party exchange. These sorts of exchanges make Bitcoin accessible to individuals who do not have the processing power to mine Bitcoin and who are not necessarily tech savvy enough to create a personal digital wallet with public or private keys. These sorts of exchanges are often criticized by Bitcoin maximalists and the original Bitcoin community, for they are rather counterintuitive to the initial creation of the program. However, because these apps are becoming so user friendly, they are greatly increasing the potential for global Bitcoin acceptability and adoption. It should be noted that individuals who hold their coins in these centralized exchanges do not technically own their coins, and utilizing one of these services can be compared to storing one's money in a centralized credit union or a bank. Chapter 5. What do I do with my BTC? Okay, I've done it. I've jumped into the cryptosphere and I got me a tiny bit of Bitcoin. Now what? I can hear you asking once you've decided to jump on board. To that, I say, just like cash, what you do with your Bitcoin is your business. Remember, I'm not here to give financial advice. Most crypto enthusiasts operate on one rule and one rule only, and that's HODL. H-O-D-L, HODL. It's a key phrase in the crypto space, an acronym that stands for hold on for dear life. This is due to the fact that we're still at the beginning of Bitcoin, blockchain, and cryptocurrency acceptance and implementation. Thus, as more recognizable, respected, and established financial institutions adopt and invest in Bitcoin, the value will continue to rise and stabilize. As the value rises, the potential profit for the common individual who holds 0.1 Bitcoin rises. And the more big names invest in Bitcoin, the greater the potential becomes. This is why I personally see Bitcoin as a long-term investment rather than a currency for day-to-day -day exchange. In previous chapters, we discussed how and where you can store your BTC. And at the end of the day, this too is up to you to determine the most secure place for your crypto. Say you were way ahead of the curve and you invested early. You have some spare BTC to play with. And now the current value of this publication is hovering around $64,000 per one Bitcoin. There's a couple rounds of action you can take. You could continue learning how about the various altcoins and novel crypto projects and reinvest some of those profits into these up and coming coins. You could cash out some coins for US dollars and take a profit. You could learn how to stake your coins, which is essentially a cryptocurrency version of lending. So you can make interest and passive income by lending your coins to invest in various projects. And, or you could just continue to hodl, hold on for dear life. The decision is yours. And as always, all I can say is listen to your intuition, that subtle voice within. Be wise and enjoy yourself, kid. Chapter six, in summary, slash the legend of Satoshi Nakamoto. It's wild to think that an essentially silent announcement 
by an anonymous source on a minimally populated message board tucked away somewhere in cyberspace had the capacity to revolutionize the entirety of a global financial industry. Though this is exactly the story in the inception of blockchain technology known as Bitcoin. One Hollow's Eve, October 31st, 2008, an anonymous user operating under the moniker Satoshi Nakamoto released an announcement to an online community of self-proclaimed cyberpunks that he, she, they were working on a trustless decentralized form of peer-to-peer -peer digital currency. This announcement was so perfectly timed, it's difficult not to view this as a direct response to the Great Recession of 2008. As we are now well aware, the stock market collapse of 2008 was an apparent and intentional crash of the US economy initiated by the same groups who were trusted to uphold and maintain the foundations of the financial system. Bitcoin inspires the drive to actualize a decentralized financial system that is not reliant on the predatory, money-hungry people operating the centralized financial institution. An opportunity for the common individual to hold the power of the currency in the palm of their hands, rather than in the contracts of banks and lenders and creditors. Even after Satoshi Nakamoto decided to absolve from the internet, not asking for a single re reward for this invention, and handing the future and responsibility of Bitcoin to the coders, even after the blockchain has endured and survived immense triumphs and tribulations, this is still only the beginning of the technology known as cryptocurrency. The movement of decentralized finance, DeFi, is only now, 2021, beginning to find footing. Within less than 15 years, the technology that is Bitcoin has inspired a completely new perspective on money, exchange, and currency, and is now a worldwide wave that is being recognized and utilized by the very same institutions that have been belittling Bitcoin since the get-go. Guess the cliche rings true. If you can't beat them, join them. And at the same time, this is only the beginning. And that concludes our video audio component reading of What the Butt is Bitcoin? A Beginner's Guide to the Earth's First Cryptocurrency by Zen the Alchemist, Gavin Smith. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to share this with you today, and I look forward to hearing your responses. If you learned something, let me know in the comments. Or don't. It doesn't really matter that much. Either way, Perhaps you've learned a thing or two or not from this. I appreciate you listening. You can download this at your whim and check out the ebook in the description. Thank you once again. Peace and prosperity to you.